let's talk about what is the minimum height that this roller coaster needs to start at in order for the roller coaster to make the loop. This is a classic problem in physics, and I imagine an important problem at roller coaster uh, design companies as well. I mean, when on a roller coaster, it's always important to make the loop. So, th this is a two-step problem. The first step is, what is the minimum speed necessary at point C? And once we know that, we can use energy conservation to solve for the, the minimum height necessary in order to have that speed at point C. So let, let's write that down. So step one is find minimum speed at point C. And then step two, find H at point A. Well, when you're going in a loop, you need a centripetal force. It's a centripetal force that keeps you going in a circle. It's a centripetal force that provides the centripetal acceleration to change your velocity in this, in this arc. So let's first find the minimum speed here. Well, we know that the centripetal acceleration comes from the centripetal force. And if you're at the top of the roller coaster, there's two possible forces. You can have the force of gravity. Well, we definitely have the force of gravity because the roller coaster has mass. And then if you're going faster than the minimum, you're also pushing up against the rails so you have the normal force pushing down. And in this case, the centripetal force will be the normal force plus the force of gravity. Now, for the, and then this would then, these two combined then equal the mass times the centripetal acceleration. So to find the minimum, the minimum centripetal acceleration, well, you would, you would go slow enough so that you're not pushing up against the rails and you don't have the normal force. And then this is mg, mac, and you see that the ends cancel. So the minimum centripetal acceleration to make the loop has to equal uh, gravity. And we know by definition, centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. And therefore, we know that the minimum speed has to be the square root of r times g. And I'll just put a little marker so we remember it's the minimum speed at point c. Well, what is the radius of the loop? It's 10 meters. The acceleration of gravity is 10 meters per second squared. And so we get the square root of 100. m times m is m squared over s squared. And then square root of 100 is 10. Square root of meters squared over second squared is meters per second. So we now know the minimum speed necessary to make the loop is 10 meters per second. So let's use energy conservation now. And with energy conservation, you always start with the initial energy equals the final energy. In this case, the initial energy is the energy of point A. The final energy is the energy of point C. So at point A, we only have potential energy. There's no speed, so there's no kinetic energy. At point C, we're off the ground, so we have potential energy. It's also moving. In fact, we know how fast it's moving. So we also have kinetic energy. And now let's plug in our terms. Well, it's mass times acceleration of gravity times the height at point A. That equals mass times acceleration of gravity times the height at point C plus the kinetic energy at point C. And we can now plug in the numbers that we know. Uh, first, actually, let's cancel off the m's from both sides. So I can rewrite the bottom equation as factoring out the m. And now I divide both sides by m. The m's cancel. 
And I simplified the equation a bit. Let's now plug in numbers, and I'll go up here to do that. So, g is just the acceleration of gravity, 10 meters per second squared. The height of point A, well, that's what we're trying to find. So I'll just leave that as h. And then on the other side, we have g, 10 meters per second squared, times the height at point C. The height at point C is 10, 20 meters off the ground, plus the kinetic energy, which is 1 half times 10 meters per second squared. We draw a little line here so we keep these guys separate. And now it's just a matter of algebra. And uh, let's work out this side a little bit. So I've got 10 times 20, 200 meters squared, seconds squared, plus, well, this is 10 squared is 100. Both the units get squared as well. And um, well, 1 half times 100 is 50. So this part just equals 50 meters squared, second squared. And 50 plus 200 is 250 meters squared, second squared. And then over here, we have the 10 meters squared, second squared times h. I will now divide both sides by the 10. Oh, did I say meter squared? That's just a meter. And same thing, what you do to one side, always have to do to the other side. And if we, uh, well, these guys cancel here. And then, well, the 10 knocks off a zero there. And with units, the second squared cancel. And one of these cancels with that guy. And you can see what we have left is a height of 25 meters. So, when designing your roller coaster with a loop of 10 meter radius, make sure it starts off at a height of 